Thank you all for joining us for today's webinar. The webinar today is designed to give you details of products and options and some of the services and courses that can help you get the most out of your Microsoft solutions. I'm Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. And our presenter today is none other than Shruti Ramaswamy. She is TechSoup's Vice President of Strategy and Strategic Relationships. She's responsible for Microsoft programs. She works closely with both nonprofits and Microsoft to ensure that the sector, I love saying this part, around the world is able to derive the most impact from program offerings. Prior to work here at TechSoup, Trudy was the technology consultant for IBM. Trudy, I'm excited to turn this over to you and look forward to learning. Thanks everybody for joining today. What we wanted to do today is really provide an opportunity for everybody here to ask any questions that you have about the Microsoft program offerings. I'll kick off today's session talking a little bit about some overview um, about what offers are available to the nonprofits and libraries for Microsoft, as well as talk a little bit about some of the program changes that you may have heard about in previous webinars or that you've been aware of because of emails that you might have received from ourselves or from Microsoft directly about what um, is happening with their donation program and how they're evolving their offers. So hopefully I'll spend no longer than 20, 25 minutes going through that. And then the rest of the time, we really want to devote to answering your questions. And so as Aretha said, there is a Q&A function on the right hand side of your toolbar or screen, if you will, that says Q&A and you can submit your questions there. We recommend you do that because then you can get a chance to see what other people have submitted. And if somebody's already asked your questions, as Aretha said, you can upvote it and just click that so that we can make sure that we're getting to those questions first. If we don't get to any of your questions today, you'll see that in pretty much every slide that I have here, there's going to be a little bit of a, an email address, reach us at techsoup.org, and you can feel free to email us directly, and we'll try to answer your specific question in case we don't get to it today. Aretha also said all of this is going to be recorded. The slides will be provided back to you. So within a few days, you will have all of these materials. So you don't have to feel like you have to write everything down or digest everything I say in this next 25 minutes. You will have your chance to be able to do that. And we've also done this webinar a few times now. So if there are other things that you want to look at in terms of slides, you can always feel free to access some of our previous recordings as well. Okay, with that, I will get us started. So I know all of a little bit about who TechSoup is since you're here today, but I just wanted to remind, even though we're talking a lot about Microsoft today, TechSoup and our mission as a global nonprofit and charity ourselves is really to connect you and all of the nonprofits around the world with donated and discounted products and solutions and give you the tools and help to really enable your own missions to work quicker, more productively, more securely. And so we have software, we have hardware, new and refurbished hardware. We offer courses, we offer lots of educational programming, such as the webinar today, but also blogs, how-to guides, articles, lots of things that we've put together around all of the product solutions that we offer. We have IT hotspots, and we also have consultation and actual services, managed services for anybody who needs it. So there are a lot of things that my TechSoup has to offer. We're going to focus a little bit on a narrow point of it of today for the Microsoft offerings. But if there's anything else that you need, TechSoup is here and we're happy to help you. We do this and we're able to do this in partnership with over 400 corporations and technology companies and foundations who help us bring that technology to the sector at large. And we're here to support you no matter where you are in this process. So we know that not all of us are at the same level of tech technology capacity or need to be completely honest. And so there's a lot of stages of digital development. So wherever you are, if you're using a paper-based system and maybe have some installed software, if you are migrating to cloud solutions, or if you need ongoing kind of support for web services or platform as a services, we can help you wherever you are and help you throughout that process. And if you have questions, if there are ways that you are struggling or things you just want to know more about, please do feel free to reach out to us, learn more about some of the solution offerings that we have. Like I mentioned, we're going to focus a little today solely on the Microsoft offerings that we have. We know that's a 
critical importance to many nonprofits around the world, and there are a lot of changes happening. So we want to make sure that we spend some time and talk a little bit about them today. The first thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is some key terms that we use and that Microsoft uses to describe some of their products and their solutions and talk about what's available today. Then I can talk a little bit about what's changing so you have a better understanding. So Microsoft offers two basic types of solutions to the nonprofit sector. One are uh, the on-premises solutions, and then the other is cloud-based subscriptions. So the differentiation there, there's a lot of differences between the two, but some of the primary things I'm going to talk about are really the on-premises solutions are things like Office Standard, um, Windows upgrades that you might be getting from us, or if you've received in the past a full Windows operating system through Get Genuine. But on-premises licenses are typically licenses that you download uh, to a device, and the licenses are device-based licenses. So you're requesting a license and downloading that license onto a specific set of hardware. You only pay one time for that license. And after you pay for that license, you can use that product. You can install that product on your device for as long as you want to. There will be free patches available if there are security updates, but if you want a new version or if you want new updates to that's not really a security related update, you would have to buy or request another version of the product. So products like this include Office Standard, like I mentioned, that's one of our bigger ones. Server licenses that many people get are some of the on-premises licenses that we offer, as well as the Windows ones that I talked about. These on-premises or desktop licenses are available in two primary ways from Microsoft. One are as donations and the other are as discounts. So the donations have a few restrictions around it, but they are offered as a full donation from Microsoft. There are still some associated administrative fees that you might have to have some uh, associated costs for. Those typically go to TechSoup to help us distribute, manage, and support these programs. But these are available to nonprofits who are eligible. They usually, the donated products are usually the standard level products. And right now they do not include any software assurance. So these are just licenses that you can download on your desktop or your device. There are some limitations. As a donation, you can only get up to 50 licenses typically per product. There are some products under servers that um, will have a smaller amount of licenses that you can get, but there are restrictions in terms of how many and quantity you can get as a donation. If you need more than those licenses, or if you want some of the professional level products or other products that might not be available as a donation, those are typically provided by Microsoft as a charitable discount. And those discounts usually range from about 60 to 75% off of any of the commercial prices. And that's been a pretty standard discount that Microsoft has had. So what they make available to the charitable community is usually under that discount range. And there's an unlimited licenses amount available. So if you want 100 licenses or if you want more than 50, you can use the discount program to get additional licenses that you want. In the discounted options, you also have an option of getting the license only products that we have in the donation. You also have an option of choosing or selecting bundles of software that include software assurance. Software assurance is a three year long benefit that provides organizations an opportunity to upgrade for free if there are any newer versions of products that come by. And there are other kind of rights, including kind of support that you get and things like that that come with the software assurance as well. That's now only available as a discount. And that is a change if you're used to our program from a couple of years ago or even last year, where most of our donation licenses came with software assurance. That is no longer the case anymore. Donation licenses are only license only. And I'll talk a little bit more about those changes in a few minutes. So everything I just talked about are the on-premises or desktop solutions. That is in one offering that Microsoft has, but where Microsoft is really going towards where Microsoft is really um, moving all of their grants, all of their donations, and all of their focus in actuality is on the cloud licensing. The cloud licensing has been obviously available to the nonprofit sector for over 10 years now. So it's not necessarily new, but these cloud subscriptions have changed over time in terms of what's available and I think can actually be some of the most robust solutions available. So the cloud licenses are a little different than the on-premises licenses. 
cloud licenses are typically licenses by user. So it's not limited to one device. It's limited to a user specifically. So me as Shruti, if I have a cloud license, I can use that same license to access the software on my laptop, on my phone, on my iPad, if I had one, which I don't, but I wish I did, but I could use it on multiple devices. That license is licensed to me as a user and not necessarily to my device. The other part of the cloud licenses are cloud licenses are subscriptions. So they are ongoing subscriptions that you are uh, signing up for essentially. And it can be on a month to month term or an annual term, but it's something that you're not necessarily owning yourself. It's something that you are going to be um, paying for usage towards. One of the benefits I think out of the cloud solutions are there are regular feature updates. So you never really have to get a new version of the product. You never have to get the latest uh, update that's there that's automatically being pushed to your subscription. Part of it being a subscription is that you are requesting whatever is in the future for this suite of software. So if you have a Microsoft 365 or Office 365 subscription, you're getting all of the same Office apps. And when there are updates or new features or new apps that are added, you're automatically getting those into your, to your subscription and you don't have to take any actions to do that. One thing that I will note is that in order to use all of the full services with these cloud licenses, it often does require some sort of stable internet connection, particularly if you are working in the cloud. So if you're doing collaboration documents, if you're using web-based applications, many of the cloud licenses do come with downloadable desktop in applications as well. And to use those, you don't necessarily need the internet um, connectivity, but if you want to update, if you want to save anything to the cloud, or if you want to collaborate, like I said, you would have to wait until you're online to be able to take um, advantage of some of those functionality. On the cloud subscriptions, Microsoft also makes some of these available as a donation as well as a discount, similar to what they do in the on-premises world. The distinction between the two are basically the license types itself. So there's a lot of different types of subscriptions and I'll walk through what's available in the cloud offer shortly, but there are um, a few primary ones that are available as a donation and those are purely donation. It's $0 for organizations that are eligible. And then the discounted licenses are same provided at the 60 to 75% off of commercial rates. One thing that I think is really important to know is that you can mix and match licenses. So if you have some of your team that you think could use some of the donated licenses, but you want some of your other team who are maybe in IT admin roles or are um, project managers or program managers to have different kind of access rates, you can have them have different licensing. It is completely mix and match. You don't have to have everybody on the same license. The other good thing is that these are subscriptions, so you can get them as you need them. So if you have five employees right now or five staff members, but in the summertime, you guys increase, uh, double in size, the help for child services or whatever that kind of nonprofit is focused on, you can do that. You can add licenses at the time period you need to add licenses and then actually remove those licenses afterwards. So you really only have to pay for what you need when you need it. And so there's a lot more flexibility um, offered in some of the cloud subscriptions that's useful to highlight. I'll pause here and then what I'm going to move on to right now is talking and I also put a slide here of the advantages and disadvantages of both of these. We've talked a little bit about this already, but I wanted you guys to see that it is there if you want to go back to it for any reason in the slides when we move forward. What I wanted to talk a little bit now is what is changing to these programs and to these offers. Some of these changes have actually already been implemented and some of these are about to be implemented in the next few weeks. On April 4th, or after April 4th, I should say, there are going to be some limitations, particularly on the on-premises offers that Microsoft makes available. Again, the on-premises offers are those that were on the left hand of the screen here. So those are the licenses that are the device-based licenses that are installed on your desktop or on your hardware. Most of these on-premises products are no longer gonna be available as a donation after April 4th. That does not mean that the, the solutions themselves are not going to be available, they will be, but they will only be available at a discounted rate. 
There are a few exceptions to that, but I'll just spend a couple of minutes talking about what that impact really means. So if you're an organization who is still using some of those on-premises or downloaded technology, particularly Office Standard or some of the server licenses or some of the user-based licenses for the servers, those licenses will still be available after April 4th, but they will have and be at a higher cost. They will not be available as a donation for Microsoft any longer. They will only be available as a discount for 60 to 75% off of the commercial rates. So it's still a significant, you know, reduction in cost to the organizations, but it is not as significant as maybe the donations have been to date. All of the functionality, and there's a slide here that talks about this as well, all of the functionality of the licenses and solutions that are available on premises will be available as a donation through the cloud subscriptions. And that's really where Microsoft is focusing. They're moving towards a cloud first donation program, a cloud first grant program, as they talk about it, where really the efforts of what they are providing as a donation to the nonprofit sector is really concentrated in cloud subscriptions as that's where they're moving forward. Again, you'll still have access to these the products. It'll just be at a discounted rate. There are a few exceptions to that. The one exception is that there will be a full Windows professional available as a donation. So we know that for many organizations, you need to have a, a full operating system before you can actually leverage some of those cloud solutions. So that will continue to remain available as a donation to the sector. And then there's a specific carve out if you're an organization that might have some public access computers, computer labs, a device where multiple people are using it because you're making it available for public consumption, where there is a carve out and an opportunity to still have some access to donations there. I didn't call this out on this slide, but I'll talk a little bit about it just in case we have any libraries with us today. There are also changes that have already gone into play for libraries. Libraries are unfortunately no longer available to access charitable or nonprofit discounts or donations from the Microsoft nonprofit discounts. They are eligible for academic discounts, and we have a, a new program that we've launched to help provide those academic licenses to libraries. And those academic licenses can be used for the public access computers that you might have, as well as your staff computers as well. We just had a webinar, I think maybe last week or the week before on libraries. And so happy to send some information on there. And we have a little FAQ about that as well and some resources. And after April 4th, as I mentioned, when these changes go through, I just want to be clear that there are no necessarily changes to any of the cloud subscriptions. So if you're on Office 365 or right now, or if you're on Microsoft 365 and using that, there are no changes to those uh, subscriptions. This change only impacts those on-premises or desktop-based solutions that are available currently as a donation. That same slide that I had provided before, I just showed here that the real only thing that's changing is the movement of the donation. So really the only thing that'll be made available is that Windows operating system. Everything else still remains the same, but it's really primarily a lot more on the discounted front for on-premises, whereas most of all of the donations are gonna be focused on the cloud-based solutions. A couple of other changes that have just recently gone through that I wanted to highlight as well is that the process for requesting and accessing your products at TechSoup has also changed. And if any of you have tried to request products in the last two months, you've probably already noticed these changes. I'll just give like a one minute background on that. We, December 31st, Microsoft retired its previous licensing program of open licensing was the solution and platform that many of you may have been used to actually go into the volume licensing center, the VLSC, and go and download your licenses. Microsoft retired that program and is really moving everything into their cloud solutions provider platform to make it a little bit more consistent with what their approach is moving forward and reduce how many different licensing platforms that they have. So part of that retirement meant that the way that we administer and the way that we deliver licenses to you had to also change. And so a lot of the changes that you see in the requesting and the way that you request and access your products are as a result of that. 
And I'll talk a little bit about what those changes are and what that might mean for you. And we've had a ton of questions come up about this and we're also learning through this process as well. So we've learned a lot in the last couple of months on how to navigate these new systems and make sure that you guys are set up, can get access to the licenses that you need and you're set up for success. So the first one is that in order to actually get your licenses, you're going to need a Microsoft account. The reason you need that Microsoft account is because that Microsoft 365 administrative account that you set up and create is actually going to be where you get your licenses from moving forward. So the first thing that organizations have to do is actually create a Microsoft account and have that Microsoft account be validated for charitable offers directly from Microsoft. So many of you may have already done this. If you have, then you don't have to do this again. But for anybody who has never been to the Microsoft nonprofit site, you will have to go through that verification process to kick off any future license requests that you might have. One thing to note here is whoever creates your account is by default set up as the account administrator. Once you're created the account, you can obviously add administrators or remove or move those administration rights. But I just wanted to flag that because a lot of people have created it in the past and they don't remember or they don't know who. It's always good to just start off with the person who created it as probably the default administrator on the account. Once you create that account, you can come to TechSoup like you normally do and add any of the solutions or products that you want to your cart. Once you do that, you'll be prompted to start linking your TechSoup account to that Microsoft account. So the first thing we'll ask you is, hey, can you give us your account name that you had at Microsoft so we can link the two together? And then after that, what we will also do is ask you to accept TechSoup as your provider and make sure that you provide Microsoft the consent to let them know that you trust uh, TechSoup to actually provide your products to you and your solutions to you so that we can actually distribute those solutions that you request directly to your Microsoft 365 account. Once we have that process go through, we will go ahead and send those products and the way that you download those licenses, particularly anything that you're getting as a donation or without software assurance, um, is going to be directly from your Microsoft 365 administrative account. So you will no longer have to go to the VLSC necessarily to get these licenses. These licenses will be directly delivered to your administrative center. And there, we have guides and some pictures over here to show what that process looks like. But you can download directly from there your licenses. A few things to notice there with that changes that have gone through is that there's only a five-day period for you to be able to download and for those links to be active for downloading in your administrative center. If it takes longer than five days or if you need more time, that's fine. You just have to come back to TechSoup and request that we reissue that link for you. There's also, because it's not the same as the Volume Licensing Center, what's available in terms of what you can downgrade to is limited based off of the product. So right now for Office Standard, you're going to get the newest version of Office Standard available, which is Office 2021. But if you wanted an older version, you can select 2019 in your download, but there's no previous versions before that anymore. And as I had mentioned before, software assurance is no longer included because these are all part of the cloud solutions provider program and software assurance is no longer available as a donation. Okay. So for anybody that's having problems or having questions about any of the new processes, we'll go through that in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. And there are slides and references, guides, videos that we've created to help you through that process as well. So happy to spend some time answering questions or going through that. But before we did that, we just wanted to quickly just walk through some of the cloud offers that are available to you. Again, there are no changes to these. So if you already have these licenses, there's no changes um, to these licenses. We're just calling out what is available as a cloud subscription to nonprofits. The first one is the Microsoft 365 Business Basic License. This is a license that is just cloud services, so it's only web applications, but it allows you, if you have internet access, to get Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, everything that you need, and that's completely free for up to 300 users. There's also the Microsoft 365 Business Standard License. This is also available for up to 300 users, but it includes everything that I just talked about in the Business Basic, 
plus downloadable desktop applications of all of those as well. So you can get access to all of the web services, all of the collaboration tools, all of the storage of cloud, but you can also access and um, download them directly onto your desktop. And because of that, it also includes publisher and access. And then the license that I recommend all nonprofits try to take advantage of is the Microsoft 365 Business Premium license, um, particularly because the first 10 licenses are completely free to nonprofits. And it's a really amazing suite of software and solutions. So even if you're going to get another solution for over 10 licenses for if you have, you know, 10 seats that you're looking for, or 10 users that you're looking for licenses for, I would definitely recommend getting this because it has all of the cloud services that we talked about. It includes the downloadable desktop applications, and it also comes with advanced security features. So with this, you can also get Intune for device management, Defender, Azure information protection. You can have conditional access rights. So there's like a lot more ability for you to have more secure frameworks and security settings in place that you can manage across your users. One thing to note here is it also does come with a Windows Pro upgrade. That's only useful if you already have a Windows Pro license. So if you have Windows 7, 8, or 8.1 Pro and you want to upgrade to 10 or 11, you can do that within this license. You have an option to do that. Um, again, that's uh, free for the first 10 users. After that, it's $5 per license per month. But if you have over 10 users and you want other licenses, you can also, like I said before, mix and match. So you don't necessarily have to go to the $5 version if you don't need that. You can get the business standard or the business basic license. Microsoft also makes available Office 365 licenses. And for many of you who had gotten cloud licenses a long time ago, you probably are on the Office 365 E1 or even an older E2 version. These are online cloud only applications. They come with everything that I had mentioned, the business basic comes with. So your basic productivity apps, including Teams, you have to have online access in order to use them. The one change I'd mention here is I think as of July, um, the E1 licenses are no longer available as a donation. So if you're a new organization or getting this as a new um, subscription, these are $2 per license per month. If you already have it as a donation, it will remain a donation you are grandfathered in. That's the same for the E2 license. It's really if you're getting new um, subscriptions or if you've never had this before that it's at a discounted rate. And then similar to the same kind of step ladder function I had before, Office 365 E3 and Office 365 E5 are also available. And each of them have building kind of security components and features. E3 and E5 licenses also include downloadable desktop applications. So you're also getting not just your cloud-based and cloud storage, you're also getting your desktop applications as well. We do have a full kind of matrix of all of the licenses that are available. And within a week or so, we should also have a handy tool and wizard that you can use to say, here's like what my organization looks like, a few simple questions, and then we can make a recommendation to you about what license might be right for you. It is a little overwhelming. There's lots of different license types and license solutions available. They all have Microsoft or Office in the name, so it can be incredibly confusing. So if you have questions, you can feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to guide you or look at these resources where we've tried to compile and make that a little bit more clear for you as well. One thing I wanted to just call out with the Microsoft grants or the donated licenses that Microsoft makes available is that Microsoft does require that any organization that's using a donation subscription, so that includes Office 365 E1, E2, Microsoft 365 Business Basic, or the Microsoft 365 Business Premium licenses, that if you are getting these um, solutions or subscribing to these cloud offers, that you need to be actually using at least 85% or have at least 85% of your users using the licenses that you've requested. There's a few different ways they calculate and manage that, but at a very high level, I just want um, people to realize that you can request licenses. And then after you request those licenses, you have to assign it to a user. Once that's assigned to a user, Microsoft is under the expectation that user is then going to use the license. So that's what they're donating, that ability for you to use that license is 
you use that license free of charge. So after you've assigned your licenses to a user, say you assign it to 10 people, but only five of them are actually using it, that would not meet the utilization requirement. Microsoft is requiring that at least 85% of your users that are assigned licenses are actually using it. And they define usage in different ways. It's all detailed on these slides, but usage is really looking at that you're at least using one of the cloud services at least once in a 90 day period. So it's not a significant amount of utilization. They really just wanna make sure that if you're using it or if you're requesting it, that you're actually getting some use out of it because it allows them to provide more donations and more offers to the nonprofit sector. This is definitely not something I would worry about, particularly if you're an organization who's actually using your licenses. I would also say is if you are an organization that has some cyclicality in your, your user base, you can always unassign that license from a user and then it's not counted against your utilization. So if you're not planning on using that license for a three month period, you can always unassign that license. You'll still have the license when you need it, but you don't have to assign it to a user until somebody's going to use it. We've put together a few resources, a blog about explaining a little bit more in depth about what this utilization requirement is, what it means for your organization, as well as a guide to how to figure out in your um, reporting and your own ad administrative tools what your utilization really is. Again, this isn't something I would necessarily worry about. Microsoft will send you an email if they think that you're not using your utilization or not meeting it. Most people are meeting it. Most people are using these services and solutions. This is really thinking about organizations that might have requested tons of licenses, maybe forgot about it and hasn't used it in a while. And you'll have an opportunity to reduce those or unassign those licenses, as I said. All right. So now we want to spend the rest of the time answering your questions. We did get a few questions and we've heard a few questions come up over and over again. So we wanted to go through those frequently asked questions first. Hopefully that will kick off and answer some of the questions that you may have had. And then we'll go directly to the ones that you've submitted today. So the first question is, are there any changes to my existing software licenses? So I have an office standard license now. I've been using it. I have a server license now. Is anything changing after April 4th? The answer is no. You are still going to be able to use any of the on-premises products that you have, such as office standard. These are perpetual licenses. You own them. You can use them as long as you want. Changes are really if you have any new requests, what's available to you after April 4th is different than what might be available to you if you had a new request today. If you have existing software assurance benefits, that's also fine. You'll be honored until the contract term, that two-year period or three-year period ends. This is really, again, for any new requests that you might have. The same is true for any cloud or current cloud subscriptions that you have. The changes that I've mentioned on April 4th are not going to impact any of the existing cloud subscriptions that you have. You can still use your cloud subscriptions with no issues. That is not going to be changing at all. One question that we get a lot is like, what if you don't have dependable internet connectivity and cloud-based solutions might not be the right thing for you? And we totally understand that. Not everybody is in the same place and not everybody has the, the infrastructure in place around them to be able to have access to continuous internet connectivity. So there's a few things I wanted to mention. One is that on-premises solutions are still going to be available for you after April 4th. They are just available at a higher cost or higher rate for you. It's at a discounted price. We want you all to know that because we know uh, we're a nonprofit. We do our budgeting at the beginning of the year and we have assumptions on what that cost is going to be. So for anybody who has had budgeting and who's had that, we want you to be aware of it so you can make the right decisions for your organizations. But those products and solutions are still going to be there if you need them. They'll just be there at a different um, cost. The other thing to mention is that the two cloud subscriptions that I talked about, the Microsoft 365 Business Standard and Microsoft 365 Business Premium License do come with desktop applications. So you can completely download and use them. You don't necessarily have to have internet connectivity to leverage and use some of those features and functionality on your desktop. When you do have internet connectivity, if you do, um, then you can use it to be able to upload to the cloud, collaborate or save things, but it's not required for you to use some of those productivity applications. 
The next question, and I talked a little bit about this, are how are libraries impacted? And as I mentioned, with some of this kind of changes and shifts in the way that Microsoft had to fulfill everything, one of the areas that was really impacted was how we serve libraries. In the past, we were able to provide nonprofit donations to libraries for their public access computers. Now, all of the offers available to libraries will be served through Microsoft's academic discounts. That will include on-premises offers for public access devices. It'll also include cloud solutions and software for your staff. So if you're a library, we have a link here and you can request solutions that are actually under the academic discount from us. We just launched this, so please bear with us. We're still learning on this process as well. So it's a little slower than we, we, we would have hoped, but we're here to help and we'll try to get you the solutions that you need. One of the other questions is, what if I need more than five days to download an on-premises software? No problem, you can contact us. We'll help you regenerate that link for you to download the software when you're able to. We know a lot of organizations, as I mentioned before, probably already have an Office 365 E1 or E2 license as a donation offer. As I mentioned, for, you, for those of you who are on those donations, that will continue to be available for you as a donation. There is a cap of 2,000 seats. So as long as you are only within that 2,000 limit, you can still add licenses to your subscription. It's really for organizations who've never received these licenses or never had the subscription that it's now only for new offers available as a discount. And then the last question that we've spent a lot of time on over the last couple of months is really, and this is something if you have not gone through it yet, you might just want to bookmark and come back to this slide <laughs> that if you are trying to make a request for an on-premises licenses right now, you might be struggling to link your Microsoft account with your TechSoup account. So there's a few tips and tricks that we put together as well as a few resources. The first thing is if you're gonna make any requests for an on-premises product, you need to make sure that you have a Microsoft nonprofit account. So if you have not created one yet, you can do that directly with Microsoft and make sure that you are eligible um, for the nonprofit offers. We've created a guide. You can get that guide on the slide. We'll put a link here for you for that. So you can walk through that process. Usually it says it takes about seven days, but if you're already validated by TechSoup and we know that, it usually is a much quicker process. So usually within 24 to 48 hours, you'll have your results and you'll be able to move forward. Once you create that account, you just have to remember that account name and then provide that to TechSoup after you add a product to your cart. Like I mentioned before, as a default, the person who's creating it is usually the administrator. Your account might look like TechSoup at onmicrosoft.com. If you've had it for a while, it might just look like TechSoup.org. It really depends on how you guys have set up your account. And then after that, you have to accept TechSoup as your provider. Make sure you give Microsoft consent and consent for a customer agreement so that we can distribute the licenses directly to you. And then you can check out. So there's a few things that obviously have to go on. It is a little bit more painful than it has been in the past where we can just automatically check you out because there's a couple of other steps. But on a good news is once you do it once, we'll have those accounts linked and we won't have to ask that information from you again. This is really setting you up for everything that you need moving forward and the new way that Microsoft is distributing licenses. So even if you get a discounted product or a donation product moving forward, we're still going to need to go through these steps. Yeah, we know it's a little, you know, clunky and it's not um, ideal, obviously, but we have created a few resources to help you. We've created a step-by-step -step guide if you just like visuals to walk you along. We also have a step-by-step -step video so you can just do it with us if you'd like to. And as I mentioned, and as on every slide here, if you're having struggles, if you need help, you can just reach out to us at reachus at techsoup.org and would be happy to help you as well. Okay. I feel like I've talked for a while and hopefully gone through some of your questions. And now I'll just switch over to some of the questions that you guys have been submitting here today. So the first one I got that has a lot of different people uploading it is from Donna. Our paid Office 365 subscription renewed January 2022. How can we switch this to the free subscription through TechSoup? And can we get a prorated refund of the recently paid subscription price? Really good question. So for anybody who was on a commercial license and actually didn't know that this offer was available to you, you can absolutely switch it over to the nonprofit subscription. There's a few ways to do that. The first one is that you're going to have to create the Microsoft nonprofit 
nonprofit account. If you already have an account, there'll be a way that when you go there to the Microsoft site, you'll be able to just sign in and it'll merge and it'll recreate your account really as a nonprofit and get you eligible for that nonprofit offer. I'll just show that to you really quickly so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me share my screen and you're gonna see all my screen here. So hopefully you can see the nonprofit offers on Microsoft. There's two options here. It's whether or not you can register as a new nonprofit or sign in if you already have a Microsoft account. If you click sign in here, it'll link your account, ask you a few questions to make sure you can be eligible for nonprofit. And once you're eligible and you get a notification from Microsoft that you're eligible for these offers, then you can send that information to us there is a resource in here about a specific, you can get the Microsoft 365 or Office 365 offer directly in our cart. And then we can add that license to you so you can get the new subscription at a uh, nonprofit discount or as a donation. In terms of the proration, usually what you are, you will get it prorated to as much as you've used. So it won't necessarily give you like the last two months for free, but as soon as you have that new offer, you'll only have to pay for the subscription for the days that you've um, used the subscription. And then moving forward, you'll have the nonprofit subscription to be able to apply to it. There are a few resources at the end of the slide that talk through some of the links that you can go to. I'll just share it right here. So there is a free consultation. And then if you go to our product catalog, where you can go and get that done. But the first step would be to create a Microsoft account. Okay, the next question is from John, had a number of upvotes as well. With regard to donation licenses, is it one license per computer, one license per location, one license per institution or something else? Really good question. So it depends on the license, unfortunately. So if you're talking about the on-premises downloadable licenses, those are one per device. So that's going to be one per the actual computer or device that you're putting it on. So if it's a server, it's going to be a server software or hardware that you're using there. It's going to be a device-based license. If you're using a cloud subscription, you can use that account on up to five devices. So each person like me can use that same Office 365 or Microsoft 365 account on up to five devices. So there are no licenses that are per organization or per location. It's really based off of a user or based off of a, a device. So those are the two options that you have. Lori asked, how can we learn the best practices for collaborating with SharePoint? We have a ton of sites with no structure or governance. Very good question. You're definitely not alone with that. So I'll offer a couple of resources to help with that. So what we try to do is make sure that you have obviously not just access to the technology, but you know how to use it and to get the most out of it. So throughout that, we have a couple of different options. The first one is we have a consultation service that'll help you pick the right license for you. But what you're talking about, knowing how to get the most out of the solution that you have, we have training that's offered under the Microsoft Digital Skills Center. There are courses that are really devoted to learning a little bit more about how to use different parts of the suite of tools you have. We have OneDrive courses, we have Excel, we have SharePoint there. We also have services that can help you in terms of data migration and managing your SharePoint sites. So if that's something that you're looking for help on, we can definitely point you to providers who are particularly focused on working with nonprofits and helping create um, a new structure and getting you support and actually doing that. And on the slide here, you'll see that there's a services link here. All of these can be opportunities that you can have to engage with us and we can point you to some resources that'll help you there as well. We have a question from John that says how, with regard, oh, we already got, answered that question actually, sorry. Celia asked about, we are a library. Is there still a way to get Microsoft products? Yes, Celia, there is still a way to get Microsoft products. They are just available as an academic discount. We have a link in the uh, slide deck and hopefully somebody can put the link in the chat right now. We have a form that you can fill out and let us know what you're interested in and what you need. And we will reach out to you and try to help you get set up with the academic licenses, both for your public access computers, as well as for your staff. 
Like I mentioned, we're still learning this process. We're new at being able to provide education licenses. And from the work that we've done with Microsoft so far, that education licenses has obviously typically been used for large academic institutions. And so they're also figuring out how to make sure it's best suited for libraries, but we're happy to work with you and make sure that you get access to the licenses that you need. Patricia asked, or Patricia um, asked, where do we go to create the Microsoft account? And I'll pop that link into chat here. It's that same site that I just showed before, but you can go directly to Microsoft and you can either select get started if you've never created a Microsoft account or sign in if you have a Microsoft account, but might not be eligible for nonprofit yet. And you can go there and start your account there. Ron says Microsoft used to offer Office 365 E1 licenses with a quantity of 300. This was great for nonprofits with maybe 100 people, all free. Why the change to such low amounts for free? Seems Microsoft is not as good as it was. If pushing nonprofits to cloud, why increase the costs a bit for larger nonprofits? That's a great question, and I totally understand what you're saying there. I do want to make sure it's clear that there are a few options still available for larger nonprofits. One is the Microsoft 365 Business Basic Solution. That is still free for up to 300 users, and you will see that the functionality here is very similar to the E1 license. It's all of the same cloud apps, and it is still available for up to 300 users. The only one that's restricted in terms of how many is the business premium license, and it's because it has a much more robust solution. It has a lot of other things offered within it. The other thing I'll just mention for larger organizations that we don't typically talk too much about on these calls because it's really only specific for organizations that have, I think it's like over probably at least 200 organization people or people in your organization, is that Microsoft does make available enterprise agreements, which are long-term agreements that you can enter into directly with Microsoft for organizations that have really larger needs. Typically to use those, you have to have a significant amount of spend with Microsoft too. So it's not ideally the perfect solution if you're just looking for some of the donation offers. But I will say that the business basic license is very similar to the E1 license from before. It is still available for up to 300, organiz 300 users and it does provide some of the similar functionality. But I totally understand your point. It's not um, necessarily perfect for everybody. Okay. Mindy asks, after creating a Microsoft account and getting approved as a nonprofit, how do we proceed um, with TechSoup and what does TechSoup charge? We submitted an inquiry with the person we met with so they couldn't help us with Dynamics 365. We submitted another inquiry about a couple of weeks ago. We haven't heard back. We're brand new to TechSoup and Microsoft, unsure how to get started. Um, thank you for that question, Mindy. First, I'm sorry that we haven't gotten back to you and we will make sure we do that. But after getting your Microsoft account set up, you can actually go directly to our catalog. Our, so you can go to techsoup.org. You can navigate to all of the Microsoft offers that you're looking for and select the solution that you want. You can go in like a self-service marketplace. If you need help, we're here to help you. So those forms that you submitted, or maybe you had a request for a consultation, you can still submit that and we can make sure that we schedule time with you to go over what might be the best option for you. But that's like the best way to get started with TechSoup or with some of the offerings that you're looking for. On the question about Dynamics, that's a good point. So for Dynamics 365, which is a particular solution that Microsoft has for their CRM solutions, so their customer relationship management solutions, we have a few on-premises versions of the Dynamics that are available as a discount. But for most organizations who are looking for cloud-based solutions on Dynamics, we don't necessarily have those products available right now. And, and the reason is because to be able to provide those licenses, usually you wanna provide some level of customization, some support, some help in actually being able to deploy those licenses because they're not usually the easiest licenses to deploy on your own. So at this point, we don't necessarily have them in our catalog, but if you still have questions on those, Mindy, feel free to send me an email at reachus.techsoup.org and I'd be happy to put you in touch with a few partners that we've worked with who might be able to help you on that. The next question is um, from James. How do we get to the resources on the slides? You will get all of this emailed to you. So if you've registered for this um, webinar today, all of this will be sent to your email. If you need it before then, you can, of course, feel free to send us an email at reachus at techsoup.org, and I'm happy to send you all of these resources as well. 
Aubrey asks, how do I check to see if my organization is registered with Microsoft as a nonprofit? That is an excellent question. You can navigate to where I um, put the slide uh, or the link in here to Microsoft backslash nonprofits. You can try to sign in and see if you have an account created that you can actually log into. If not, there is a contact us inquiry there. You can contact Microsoft and ask them to see if they have it. If not, you can also contact us at reachus.techsoup.org. We can try to see if there might be um, an account that you may have created or somebody that may have created for your organization. Um, we don't necessarily always see that information. We only see the information um, for organizations who have already gone through the uh, nonprofit validation. So you may have had somebody on your team create an account um, that maybe wasn't for nonprofit. So those are a couple of options that you have. I will say it's not ideal, particularly if you have existing solutions or existing subscriptions that you're using, but there is no harm and it's okay to create a new account. If you don't have access to an existing account, if you have no idea who created it and you're not using anything on it, you can absolutely create a new account with Microsoft and still get access to the solutions and the donation offers that you need. Okay. We have a few questions that came in about libraries and public access computers. Cheryl asks, why were we locked out of purchasing Microsoft Office four months earlier? So for most nonprofits, a lot of these changes are only happening on April 4th. For libraries, these changes happened on December 31st. I completely understand that question, believe me. So the reason that this actually happened was because of the fulfillment changes Microsoft made. So as Microsoft changed from their old licensing platform of the VLSC and getting your licenses from the VLSC to this new program where you're getting everything through your Microsoft account. It all became account related. And unfortunately, libraries can only be eligible for either academic licenses or nonprofit licenses. And so in the new system, you can't be eligible for both. And so that's really as a consequence of the fulfillment changes had to happen and had to impact the library community earlier than the nonprofit community. So definitely agree that's not ideal and it was not necessarily the best outcome for uh, libraries in the short term, but hopefully in the long term, because all of the educational discounts are still available to you, you will still be able to access all of the products that you need. The discounts on an educational or academic discounts are actually pretty significant and sometimes are even better than the nonprofit discounts available. And there are still some cloud licenses that are available as a donation under academic as well. Carly asked, we're a nonprofit with public access computers, not academics or a library. Would we still need to go through academic versions of Microsoft for those public access computers? Great question, Carly. And we'll probably have a webinar particularly on this in April, but for nonprofits who actually have public access computers, so nonprofits that are in shelters or providing shelters or domestic violence centers or are doing community center courses that actually have public access computers, there will be a small donation offers that are available still for you so that you can still get access to the technology that you need at a donation cost versus a discounted cost for particularly those public access computers. Microsoft is aware that a lot of the cloud subscriptions being user-based licenses doesn't really meet the need for a public access computer and obviously want to continue supporting those very real needs. And there will be just a secondary kind of thing to make sure that you're using it for public access computers. But as long as you're using it for that purpose, you'll be able to get donations particularly for that need. We only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to get it, try to get to a couple more questions. If there are questions that I did not get to, please um, feel free to reach out to us at this email, reach us at techsoup.org, and we will do our best to answer your questions. Dorinda asks, what does it mean by do not include software insurance? So great question. Dorinda, pre previously, so prior to December, anytime anybody got a on-premises donation or desktop licenses from TechSoup, it came with a benefit called software assurance. Software assurance was a two-year contract or a two-year benefit that was provided along with your licenses that allowed you a two-year period to get any access to any upgrades that were available within that period for free. And for some of the um, server-based solutions or from the Windows-based solutions also included some level of support. 
So the current donations do not include that benefit automatically with the license. If you want that benefit, you would be able to get that through a discounted offer that included specifically the software assurance benefit. I will say, by and large, most nonprofits that we saw use that benefit for that two-year period to request upgrades. So that was the primary benefit that people had used in the past. And so that's really the one thing we wanted to make sure that people were aware of. I know that we have a lot of other questions in here that we weren't able to get to, and I sincerely apologize. And I hope that some of the content in here was able to answer some of those questions for you. I'll just remind you that all of these slides are going to be provided to you in your email. They will include a list of resources and links for you to be able to get access and to see and click on any of these things so that you can get to the resources and the places that you need to make the request that you need. There are blogs, articles, recordings of these webinars in the past where you can look at to get information as well. And of course, you can feel free to reach out to us as well. And so I hope that this was informative and helpful for you. And if you do have questions, please do reach out. We're here to help.